Cavendish. Cavendish takes the stage. Wow. The road. Cavendish in the centre. And Mark Cavendish wins number 32. Yeah. Now the sprint opens up. Here goes Cavendish. Cavendish, 33 wins in the Tour de France. Merckx's record is on. The Max missile matches Merckx. 34 wins in the Tour de France. I remember the day Mark met for the first time André Dargal, who won 22 stages in the Tour. And there was such a respect Mark had for Dargal. Mark Cavendish has the respect of the Tour. He is the greatest sprinter in the history of the Tour, and he loves the Tour so much. And for that, thank you, Mark. But immediately from the first training camp, uh, when I saw that he was so happy, jumping on the bed of Dr. Vermont and saying, I'm so happy, I have my bike, I'm, I have my team back, then I thought, hmm, maybe something beautiful uh, can come out. That's a good question. I think the first time I ever met Mark, actually, he came into my office in Manchester at the, uh, at the Olympic team, and he walked in with a shell suit on, and he sat down and I said, right, you know, what's the top of your mountain? Where are you heading? And he kind of gave me this real kind of look of what, what you're on about. And he just said, I'm going to be the fastest sprinter in the world. And, and I, was, I was taken aback, you know, and, um, and sure enough, he is. And uh, I think that right from an early age, I think he's a, lo a lovely mix of um, head and heart. Because you can see it when he's racing, he's, he's very, very clever. He's strategic in what he does, but he wears his heart in his sleeve. He's very emotional as well. And I think um, I admire the way he burst onto the scene in the first instance and had that terrific run when he first appeared in, um, well, on the Olympic stage and, and, uh, and here at the Tour de France, of course. But I, th I think in many respects, I've got even more admi admiration for the way that he's burst back onto the scene, having had all of that time where, um, you know, he had to really grit his teeth and dig in and, um, and, and fight, basically. And, and I, I can't, I think everybody has got so much respect for that. And it's a kind of a, he could have gone on and broken the record straight in the run, if you like, on, a, on a, just straight away. But the fact that it's been a break and he's come back and he's done it the way he has, has just proven to everybody beyond doubt that he is the greatest of all time. Everybody was so happy Mark was back in the team. And from the moment Patrick said, we take Mark, we knew he should win again. And that's also one of the biggest uh, moments in, in the career of a rider of, of our uh, team that we managed to get uh, a lost wolf back into the band. And it's unbelievable. First of all, it's by himself because he has to pedal. We can create an atmosphere, we can support him, we do everything we can. But after all, he has to do it, and that proves the real character, the real Mark. And just imagine, just imagine he can beat the record from Eddie Marks, the biggest ever. Then I think he, he need to become a hundred years to meet, to meet the person who wanna be, he, who's going to beat that record. It's insane. And we hope and we try to make it, but after all, it's such an amazing guy and somebody likes him, somebody don't like him, but if you really know him, you will always love him. They swing right-hander, Cavendish in a perfect position, 290 metres to go. Morcow is ready to try and launch the Max missile for win number 33 in his career. Morcow is getting set to lead out Mark Cavendish. Is this going to be the record of Max? Philipson goes on the left-hand side. Mark Cavendish, the Max missile, matches Max. 34 wins in the Tour de France. Oh, well, uh, it's been uh, extremely proud for me to, to work with a legend like Mark. Um, he's definitely the most experienced sprinter uh, to work with, I ever, I ever worked with. Um, the experience that he has on the last final meters himself uh, just also make my uh, and the team's jobs even easier. So 
Yeah, it's been a true pleasure and um, I feel really unfortunate that I got the chance to, to work with Mark uh, once and I hopefully it's not last time. And then you just see what a team this is, you know, you've got the green jersey, the world champion, Julian Alphalief. He just comes just to get the final pull to try and catch the, the breakaway, you know, of putting everything in, you know. Like, but so many people didn't believe in me, you know, and these guys do. Yeah, for sure, uh, that was a really special tour for, for us, but I think also for Mark because he came uh, at the last moment. But I think, uh, yeah, he showed really uh, his motivation. He showed also that he's uh, one of maybe the fastest uh, sprinter in the world, and uh, everybody was so happy to, to work uh, for him, to, to protect him always. And uh, yeah, I think it's uh, amazing what he did, and uh, we, are, we are proud of him. The first memory of Kev, of the first sprint I saw from him, um, was what I noticed was his position. I, a few years before, I could play around in the in the wind tunnel and was searching for the perfect position and I found one but I couldn't hold it and then I saw uh, Kev sprinting and I said he can do it he has that position that is so perfect for a sprinter which was unique I never saw somebody doing it like that like that so um, yeah and then he starts winning and then uh, I must say over the years um, I told him already uh, a few years ago that he is probably and is the best sprinter of the world. Also what he did now, where he come from the last three years and now back, is back to his family and this is an amazing feeling for us. Not only for me, but also for him. For me what he did here for us, for the team and also for himself it was amazing. Oh, congrats, man! What a f you're, you're in the form of your life, or what? No, I'm in the team of my life. We made history. We have a battle story. We found out on an old picture that I'm uh, in relation with him already 15 years. And then we was working together since HTC, first year 2008 when we changed to uh, HTC High Road and then it continues the story. But I think it's very special. Maybe when you know each other a long turn, you have also a long remember. And it's every time something about laughing. Do you know, do you still remember this or do you still remember that one? And it is crazy. It, it's, it's fun every day or when you have the long relation, the, know each other a long time, then it's very fine. Well, just to have them guys with me, just, they could have been easy in another group. They stayed with me, they just paced me, the support they gave me, like, oh, oh, I'm all emotional, man, really. Working with Kev the last 15 years gave uh, quite a few grey hair. But I also gave quite a few stage wins during the Tour de France. It has been like a roller coaster, like an Alfred Hitchcock movie with a little uh, twist of uh, falsy towers. It had not been boring at all, trust me. But most of all, it has been a big, big honor. Congrats to all of you. Well, uh, of course, you always have ups and downs with calves, and uh, but I was lucky to have most of the time upsize and enjoyed working with him because, uh, you know, at the end of the day, he's a winner. And what do we all try to do here? So I could pin a number on the jersey and what do we want to do is winning bike races. And he executes really, really well. So, uh, yeah, no, it was really nice to be part of that journey, of, of that journey and to be at the beginning of that journey. And uh, of course, like, I'm super happy where he is right now. It was never easy with Kaf in the tour, in not a single race, but he was the biggest pleasure to see him uh, delivering after everybody was like, even us in the team is like, we're not gonna get him over this mountain. It's like, and if we get him over the mountain, everybody's like, he can't sprint. But when he saw this finish line, he delivered, he won it. And that's what we also see nowadays. It's like the pressure he gets actually from the team, not just the seven riders around him delivering perfectly to the finish line. It's a whole stuff behind. That pressure that builds up in him to bring that success to the line. I think that's the biggest pressure, 
biggest burden he actually carries around that rucksack all the time and that's what I think sets him apart also for the other guys is uh, not just thinking about himself, the whole team. Cav, huge congratulations mate, um, I'm so happy for you, you deserve everything you get, um, you're a top person and to see you making history um, was an unbelievable achievement, so massive congratulations, enjoy it with, it with your family, I'm sure you will and it's nice to know that I played a very small part with them tough sessions during lockdown on the bike, <laughs> but no honestly mate, I'm, I'm delighted for you. Um, a huge congratulations again and, um, and enjoy it. Hi Mark, it's Gareth Southgate here. I just wanted to send congratulations on behalf of myself and all of the England team. Phenomenal achievement. Um, I'm a big fan of everything that you've done. I loved watching you ride over the years and uh, yeah, congratulations. Congratulations. There's not much more for me to really say that I haven't already said in thousand text messages or hours worth of conversations. I'm so proud of you. I'm, I'm proud of you for what you do on the bike, but I'm more proud for what you've done off the bike. Um, these last few years, it would have been really easy to have just stopped, to have listened to all of the stuff around you and just given up. And I know I drove you mad, but I needed you to have this. I needed you to feel this again, to feel that love for the sport that you've given everything to. Um, and here you are, so enjoy it. And we love you, we love you very much. We're so proud of you, Daddy. <laughs> what a what a perfect race boys what a perfect sprint what a perfect sprint Keep going.